Stop right there. Yeah, you. If you like all things entertainment, current events, or Hollywood, then look no further. Creator to Creators, hosted by director Mio Shabin of Horror Noir, interviews filmmakers and creatives from around the world. Join in on the fun, guest celebrities, and informative information to have as a creator. Hit subscribe and stay connected to Creator to Creators. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Creators to Creators today. Today we have a special guest. KCB. Welcome, welcome. I'm really excited to to talk to you. I I I listen to your music. I really love it. It it's it's really fun. It's it's different. And I love your voice. You have a beautiful voice, gorgeous voice. But before we get into that, let's go back to the beginning. I always, I, I always love going to the childhood. Like, you know, I always say the child your childhood kind of charged sort of like your trajectory of where we're going to be going in life, the, the little things that we pick up as we're, you know, kids. But tell me a little bit about your childhood and how you, you know, what was what was that like? And then how did you kind of get into music? Um, I always kind of had a love for music. Uh, my A lot of my family was really musical. My dad always would play instruments and stuff when I was a kid and sing. And um, my sister actually is a musician as well. She's more of an alternative musician. She's amazing. She does all her own stuff. Um, but my brother plays instruments too. But, you know, she's a little bit more established, I guess, community wise. But, you know, just like a lot of music, just being around Everybody loved music. Everybody was into it. And I was the youngest. And I always just like, I guess, looked up to everybody else doing it and was, it just thought it was super cool and always loved it. I think I realized I loved singing when I was probably like six or seven, but I just, you know, you know, you're really shy. You're little and you're like (laughs) a little nervous at that age, but I did. I loved it. And it was it just kind of grew from there, you know, and then in my church, I always loved singing at church and all that. And so I had my opportunity to start singing through church. And so being that I already felt comfortable with them and I loved singing there, it was just like a perfect opportunity to kind of branch out and, you know, establish that I did like to sing, that I was wanting to sing at that age. Yeah, no, it's, that's beautiful. I, I love that, that you were singing in church. I think... I, you know, I, I, I wish I could sing. I I can't, I can't sing. My, my mom is like the singer and I'm like, I, I didn't get that. uh, (laughs) You have a really pretty talking voice though. So one would think. (laughs) Well, (laughs) thank you. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, so tell me a little bit about like this, 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 like your EP. Like I love, I love the title. I am me. I feel like that is like super, like, I like that statement. It's very like, you know yourself like you're at a place of like okay this is me I like that title so where did that come from and tell me about the process of making this song well um I am me was the, the actual hook of it um I made a while ago well it's part of the hook but I it had been like kind of floating around in my head and it's not the first time this has happened like it was just like it was floating around in my head for a long time we actually found a video on Facebook me and my boyfriend like not that long ago of like me doing like a freestyle singing and I was using the part of the hook in the freestyle like five years ago and I he was like oh my gosh you really did have it that long and I was like I was older than that I had it before that but the rest of the song kind of pieced together like you know more more recently it was actually funny because we went into the studio I was freaking out because I was like I'm not prepared I don't have a well-established song and it just kind of came to me I had a friend visiting town um who'd actually helped me a lot in the past trying to help me put music out financially and like physically like just being there to like try and help me because he just really believed in me and he was in town and he was just like, really like, oh, you got to put something down. You got to, but you can, you can do this. This is going to be really cool. And he kind of came with us and I don't know, it just kind of sparked me a little bit. Like I was like, that's right. I got to do something cool. But, and, and it was also cool because I had been holding on to that for like a long time. And I was like, oh my gosh, finally I found where I can use this idea that I've been thinking of for so long. And here it is. It fits right in here. And it was really cool. That's awesome. And it was just, you know, confident thing. You know, you wanted to really, really wanted to push a different agenda, like a really positive. And it it felt like it was for everybody, you know? A lot of people really struggle 
with the idea of who they are and their identity. So it was like very pushing that whole just being you, you know? Yeah. What made you go on that journey of like what, like trying to figure that out? I think, I think, like you said, everyone's like in that stage. I think even after the, 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 the pandemic was over, I think a lot of people were like, wait a minute, who am I really? <laughs> you know, I think a lot of questions, yeah, <laughs> self-reflection and all that came up out of that. Like we were forced to like really deal with that. So we really were. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> we really were. Um, I honestly feel like I still, I feel like we always are figuring ourselves out, you know, because we're, we're ever changing, we're always growing as people when that never stops. But I, I do feel like you reach a point in your life where you do have to like really embrace yourself, you know, and I think that I was kind of on like kind of in limbo for a while. Mm -hmm. Where I felt like, you know, it wasn't like I didn't know who I was, but I was like, what, you know, what am I really doing? Like, what's going on out here? And so it's like, it was like a, I wanted to define myself and like embrace it more because I felt like, I mean, I've been doing this for so long. I mean, you've been loving this for like, since you were a kid, you know? So why not just, why not just take it in? Like, why not just be like, yep, this is how I feel, you know, and just unapologetic and I feel like a lot of people should should be like that because I think sometimes in life yeah you know we're in this society that's really judgmental and there's just like a lot of you know there's a lot of positivity too but there's a lot of negativity and I feel like a lot of times people are like scared to fully embrace themselves or they have this like false narrative in their head that oh they're supposed to be like this or they're supposed to be like this and at the end of the day if you're doing your very best to like to, to be yourself and to be your best version of yourself you're amazing right like just like that yeah and everybody is you know so that was really like the feelings that I was having where I was like why am I battling with these feelings that I don't mm -hmm. know how I feel about myself right you know? do, do, do you feel like society puts that false narrative out there like you know like through e whether it's media music you know they do it's entertainment you know keeping the clicks going and stuff like that I mean I think that sometimes you know, it's easier to get people to go and look at unattainable things or like mm -hmm. to look at things that seem things that seem like they would be good, but they're really, you know, and it's not that there's anything wrong with some of those things, but like it, it like they highlight just specific things and they don't right. highlight everything. They don't highlight things that everyone can shine in really, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, no, seriously, it's, it's, and, and good for you for, for, for rising above all the, that, you know, and then being in the music, I can't imagine like how, uh, just the, the weight that you have as a, like an artist. I mean, I, I have it in a different way, like through film, like literally I was just talking to a friend about just like, you know, about this deal, about this film deal and how, you know, to talk about this, talk to this person, this person is just like, it's just like so many things and I just can't imagine what it's like being an artist because you're you you're you're selling not just selling but you're putting yourself out there your face you're you are your your brand <laughs> right yeah, it's actually awkward it's so <laughs> awkward like I'm like oh hey guys listen to my song I hope you guys like it then I'm just like well <laughs> it's just me like I want people to go follow my page and I'm like if you guys want to go look at my face more <laughs> feel free to go follow my page <laughs> but it, it's like uh you know and you don't want I don't want to sell out you know, in terms of like sometimes you can and I have not like I like a lot of songs that are like really simple and just have like a fun vibe and stuff and some of my songs can be like that but you know I really 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 want to maintain like a deep you know, like real emotions, real feelings, real things that people, you know, deal with, you know, and you just, I like to make things fun. I have a lot a wide array of emotions, just like any human being does. And I just want to be able to portray that and put that out as like for what it is and make it yeah. good. And I hope people like it, you know, and I, but I don't want to, it's hard. Cause it's like you said, you are selling yourself. So sometimes it's like, you might want to be like, well, I feel like people would really like something like this but yeah. that's not me you know but <laughs> right you gotta pick and choose but I imagine you probably go through all that same stuff yeah 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's a, it's a, it, you know. I think, and I think at the end of the day, I think you have to love what you do, and I, and and it shows that you love what you do, like the thing and just what your art and how you present it, and it's like, you know, that's what makes you us continue to do this interesting in, industry that we're in. Um, yeah, because it is. I think it is like there. It is always going to be the good and bad, and, and and everything. So I look at it like that. Like I, I enjoy it. There, there are good moments. There are bad moments. There are, you know, it's just a process, I guess. But we love it. We love this wild. The good moments outweigh the bad ones. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they're crazy ones, but yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just, I just had one. I won't get into it. Not, not right now. But yeah, just it. You know, I was curious. <laughs> it, it was at a panel. I had a speaking thing for filmmakers uh, in film, and it, it, it was just a. I don't, I don't know. Just a all. It was just interesting, but you know, we did. I, I did it. It was fun. Um, I got to meet a lot of filmmakers, um, women in film, which I really enjoy. So well, that's what keeps that me going. Like. Incredible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. Um, so I'm curious, I read something you said that at one point you didn't like you, you know, you didn't want to put your music out there. And I and and you know, you, you were worried about, you know, I think were you were you worried? My question is, were you worried about critics? Were you worried about like what, what you just wasn't ready? Like I because I think you're phenomenal you're very talented it's really like an interesting thing I also have a daughter and I feel like for a minute I was kind of pouring into her a lot there was a lot going on I was working I was doing other things and I started to think like you know I kind of put my music on the back burner like Mm -hmm. I was just kind of like oh like and I had a few songs out and they were good you know and I just wasn't taking it that serious I see and then I just kind of actually honestly my boyfriend helped me a little bit because he was really on me about it too like he was like you should do this like you should be taking this seriously and I was like you know what that's actually like it just made me really like put into perspective long term when you are old one day and you look back at what you did with your life how are you going to feel are you going to feel like you put things out that you wanted to put out are you going to feel like you did things that you want to do and I'm I really feel like strongly that like that's why I so strongly do feel that people should just be so unapologetically like themselves because you really only live once and you have, you know, ample opportunity to do anything that you want to do if you put your mind to it. And that was my thought process was like, if I don't, I could at least be putting music out because I love it. I think about it all the time. These little ideas are always just going through my head. I sit at home and make music all the time and I just wasn't putting music out. Mm-hmm. And wasn't organizing it and putting it in a plan, in a, you know, a, an album, an EP. And so it just took like kind of a little bit of self-reflection. Yeah. To just be like, what do you, what do you really want? You know, because you can still work other jobs. You can do all the stuff you need to do. You can do whatever you want, really. Mm-hmm. You just got to go do it. And so I just decided to do that. I love that. I love that. Do, do you now? For me, it's interesting. I always say that, um, I, I mean, I commend artists. I feel like what, like to be in a studio all day is absolutely, because I've done this, like sitting in studios and like watch artists. I'm just like, how do you guys do it? You must, Do you enjoy that process of like being in a studio and this like in that whole thing, you know, like that. So do you do all of it? Do you produce too? Um, I'm in the process of getting a little bit better at my own production. I have recorded myself, but I still need a master, like nice. someone to help me master it and all that, you know? That's cool. Um, I do love going in studio. It is fun too when you get more than one creative person together. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, it it plays a role. Sometimes they might be like, Oh wow, like what if you kind of sang it like this or you did it like this? Mm-hmm. Um, which is nice because some, you know, you everyone's got a different thought process, but it's actually really funny because the studio that we've been recording in all summer long had no air conditioning. Oh no. It was so hot. <laughs> and I'd have like four hour sessions and it'd be okay. like hour three and I'd be like, I'm out of breath. I can't <laughs> it. We gotta, I gotta put my head out the window. <laughs> like, and it, <laughs> and that's dedication. 
he's great. It's just, it was just super funny because you're like, how does that feel? And I'm like, it was hot. It was hot in there. <laughs> but now it's not. It. See, it's, now we already, I live in Montana, so we already have snow outside right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's going to go away. Like, it's not going to be like consistent like this for the rest of the year, but we did get a bunch of snow and it is cold, but it's actually good for me if I go to the studio. I was actually like, I was like, oh my God. The next studio. <laughs> I love that. No, I love that. Have Have you ever thought about uh, having making music for film, like it's, make it sound like for like for putting into a, like because I I could totally hear your music in like a film or something. I'm like that's. I would great. love that. Like I would love that. It's actually crazy because when we made that song, we were like this. We did just seen Spider Verse, and I, my <laughs> daughter, I was like. I was like, Elsie, where would you, could you hear this song on Spider-Verse? And she was like, oh my gosh, yes. Like, oh my gosh, she was all into it. Um, but yeah, we were like joking about it. I was like, could have this been, could, um, what's his name? What's the Spider-Verse guy? Miles, Miles Morales. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, could you see Miles Morales swinging around to this song? And she was like, yeah. She's so, she was just, she's just saying it to make me happy. She's like, yeah, I for sure. I definitely see it. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love that. I also read, oh my gosh, you've opened up for a lot of people. Like holy crap. I was like, geez. Just curious. Now, out of all everyone are, you know, legends in their own right that you opened up for. That's awesome. But any any like memorable moments where you're like, okay, because like I'm sure as an artist and, and a creator, like you get to those moments of like sometimes it's like quiet times and you're like okay what's happening and then those moments come and you're like okay does it remind you like okay I'm on the right track I'm doing something right it actually does it actually the thing that I was the most worried about was having to go and perform my songs initially like I was like mm -hmm. oh god like if it was just putting the songs out you know no big deal like I love putting my going and, and making songs in the studio and putting them out it was like having to go and present myself to people you know, and actually, although I did perform by myself on a stage at a young age, like I'm not saying that I hadn't, but it was just like, it's just different, you know? Yeah. And when I like did finally go on stage, it was actually crazy because I enjoyed it. Yeah. I had fun. I had like a really great time. And the very last time I went on stage, I wasn't even nervous. I love I was that. like, and I was like, what? I'm not even nervous. Like I just was like, hey, yeah. like swung my head around. <laughs> I was having like a great time up there, which is just funny because that was my biggest worry that whole time. I was like, oh my gosh, I just don't want to have to go out and be presenting myself like this. And and it's fun, you know? Yeah. And that's just the whole part of the process too is just like being up there in your element and you are presenting your music to people. And like, you know, it was cool because what better way to present yourself to people than in person yeah. on stage in live, yeah. you know? <laughs> right. You do the best, you know? And people love that and they loved it. And I actually knew a lot of people because it was in my own town, you know, it was awesome. in my own city. And so like when I went out, I recognized a few people and my community is very supportive. They're really, really all like great people, you know, oh, and okay. I know a lot of people here cause I'm from here. So I did, I like looked out in the audience, people were really, they were hyping me up. They were cheering oh, for yeah. me, you know? So it was nice. It was a good feeling because it would suck if I went out there and everybody was like, <laughs> Which did cross my mind. Like, I was like, God forbid. God forbid they don't say anything. But no, everybody was like, woohoo! You know, which is good. Because I'm like, I know you guys. You guys better be nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> do, do, I'm curious. Do you have, like, you ever heard those, like, artists that they're like, you're like your Nicki Minaj or, or like, even Beyonce, you know, they say, oh, you know, I go on stage and there's Sasha Fierce. And then, you know, uh -huh. or, or like when an, an actor can separate the two, like, okay, I'm going to play this role. I leave me uh -huh. home, but I, this character I become. So is it almost like you become another person on stage? Like you just have this, like, or do you just feel like you're kind of, it depends. I, I mean, it, it is like you're another person because you definitely are like, you have to hold yourself to a standard on the stage, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's, you know, it's, it's like, it's still me, but I do get what you're saying because it is like a different persona kind of, you don't want to just go up there and just sing your song. Like you want to have some energy. You want to have, you know, make eye contact with people. You want to, you know, bring, you want people to feel the song. So you have to roll that thing out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I got to come to your show. Um, 
it, you know, I love asking this question. There's no, there's no wrong answer, but if, you know, the three levels of, of influence, money, power, or respect. And if you could choose one of those things, which one would you choose and why? That is a really hard question. Probably respect. Because to be honest, at the end of the day, if you didn't have respect, nothing else would really matter, you know, mm -hmm. because people, your connection with people is the most important thing yeah. for you, you know, long term. Once again, I think about like when you're old and things like that, you know, and long term, you need respect is what's going to carry you, you know, through life and everything. You know, you need people, people need connections and things like that to be together and that's all really important. So I would rather at least have everyone respect me. And then guess what? If I'm old and I'm going to fall in the street, someone's like, there's a sweet old Casey. Like, let me help her up out of the street. Because if not, they're going to be like, leave her there. <laughs> Down there in the streets. It's your time. No, I, that's a great point. It's a great answer. Great answer. I like that. Any advice, though, for, for those artists that or someone that wants to even try to get uh -huh. into music? What advice would you give them? Nike swish, just do it. No, but seriously though, just follow through and don't get in, up like nervous about nothing. Basically getting nervous about nothing because if it's what you want to do, then it's meant for you. Yeah, 100%. Like if that's something you want and you know that and you've been there and you've been thinking that and you felt this, then it's probably meant for you. So why hold yourself back from that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You're making your life harder if you're holding yourself back from stuff that you feel you're meant to do. You're yeah. going to be suffering because you're going to wish you were doing it. You're going to be at your other job thinking about how you wish you could have were working on a song like you should have been or doing stuff that you like to do. Life is about you have to survive, but life is like for you to live. Yeah. You know, we're here to enjoy our lives and love things that we do. And, you know, it's just. Sometimes I feel like people get caught up because they're like, I'm supposed to be doing this. Like, I'm supposed to be doing that. This is my responsibility. Yeah. I, I'll go live in the woods. It, but I'm not, I'm not like a good survivor, <laughs> though. I would need a, like a community out there. I, that's why I need respect. Because right. if I want to go live out in the woods, if the end of the world comes and I have to go live out in the woods, I'm going to die by myself. <laughs> I need a good 25 people. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Just saying. That's a good point. It's a, good... a lot of survival movies. <laughs> you know, good 25 people. <laughs> Maybe more. <laughs> no, I love that. I love that. I mean, you have to, you, you know, I love, I love that, the, 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 the your perspective because you, I mean, it's so, it's so true. Um, really fun question for you. Uh, if you could be managed by any, well, anybody, um, it could be artists, living or dead. Who would it be and why? That is such a hard question. I know it's so I, hard. It's so hard. I have a lot of respect for like a lot, a lot of different people. That's like so difficult for me to decide. How could you put me on the spot like this? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is such a crazy question. I mean, off top, I, I would say someone like Michael Jackson, just because Ooh, like okay. he's such a like, I mean, he's a cool dude. There's a lot of, like, things that you kind of wonder about him just because he's very, like, he's very iconic. He's a super talented guy. And I just feel like he had a really, you know, good, res like, perspective on, like, music and life. And I just would wonder, like, what direction he would push an artist if he was going to, like, try and direct them. Like, what he would want them to do in terms of, like, how they made their music. Yeah. And, you know, what he wanted them to dress like, what he wanted them to dance like. Like, I just feel like he has, like, a lot of skills and was in the music industry for a really long time and just like saw a lot of transition through time the way yeah. that things changed and that he was so adaptable you know and universal sounding that people can hear his song right now and everybody's like woohoo I love this <laughs> you know, right I think it's like great you know and he always you know seemed like a really nice guy so that's a it great just, that's a great answer. Yeah, like, I'd be like, rise him up from the dead like that thriller. <laughs> so he could come manage me. Oh, I know. And, you know, and it's crazy. <laughs> well. you know, 
it, it will never be another Michael Jackson. But I got to say, like, the, the, the kind of stardom that he had was absolutely one of those, like, God level was like, how did he reach? You know, it's like that, that pen that he reached that top, like, holy crap. So I think it comes with a lot. <laughs> You know, like when people just do crazy stuff and it just gets them like a bunch of hype. Michael Jackson, he just started that. He just started doing super crazy stuff. <laughs> like put the blanket on the baby's head and stuff like that. <laughs> right. He he did do some things. He did. Do, did yeah. Yeah. He did a lot of questionable things. But in terms of music, he was very, he knew what was going on. Like with that, you know, <laughs> he was probably kind of a weirdo, but like, it's okay. I think you gotta so be kind of weird to do art, the the music, like it to be in music, don't, don't you think? Yeah, you do. That's probably why he was so good at it. He was so weird. Like the level of weird you're at, like the better you are or something. Like he was like max capacity. So <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's 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 one of those things I always think. Like how do how does how does anyone, you know can 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 maintain a, a level head i guess somewhat um at, and be that famous because i think stardom can kind of i don't know sway your way how you like i don't know see everything i don't it, know it definitely can i can definitely see that plus he also made it really hard for people not to be able to recognize him <laughs> true so it's true. not like he was able to just like put his hood on and like willy-nilly walk through town like <laughs> he messed that up for himself <laughs> I mean, do you think, do you think that like, you know, as an artist, like say, you know, make a big hit, you know, you can't be unfamous anymore. You could be infamous, but, you know, yeah, like, you be infamous. but <laughs> like that, that, that level of, I mean, could you, do you ever thought about that? Like, of like, oh, you know, my life is going to be different. Like, I can't just go to the grocery store or like take a walk in my neighborhood anymore. I mean, it has crossed my mind like in local terms, you know, where I, you know, I've, I've had like a lot of people like recognize me and be like, Oh my gosh, you're, you know, I remember, I know you, you did yeah. these songs, like you did all this. And so far it's actually been really cool, you know, because everybody's just really nice, but I have, I've thought about, you know, just where, you know, you gotta kind of like, I was like, that would kind of suck, but I'm like, it's all right. You know, I guess if, I don't know. I don't like going to the grocery store anyways on the bright <laughs> side. Like, I'm like, I guess I'll do DoorDash. But I don't know. I guess the, the most thought I put into it was like, wow, that's like really interesting that I've had like a lot of people just like come up and just like know who I am. That's awesome. But thankfully, I haven't had any bad experiences. That's good. So like, I mean, hopefully, like, I guess that's the only thing I've ever thought about is it would be scary to have like a bad experience due to that, you know? But I think that most likely, you know, you have good experiences as long as you give off good energy and you're- yeah doing all the right things and I'm not like that famous so <laughs> oh you got it you're famous you're famous you got it like I I love it I love it I I just I'm and and you know do, do you have any like anything coming up any shows that you like to talk about before we uh close or anything like that so I don't currently have any like show shows coming up right now that I've like scheduled but I am um in the process of I have a song coming with um one of Young Money's artists. Nice. Um we're working on something super cool guy, Alan Cubis. Awesome. Um and then I have um I'm going to Atlanta to be recording with a guy by the name of JC. Um he's pretty he's pretty good at what he does. So that's that's gonna be really cool going to work with him. Um and then I have another single that I've been working on that I'm really excited about called Alone. So mm. even though I like to bring, you know, positive vibes and razzle dazzle, um, I, w I am a human being. So I have different emotions that go different ways. And I really try to like express, you know, anything, and everything that I feel. So alone is definitely a little bit less happy, <laughs> but it's a really cool song and it's relatable. So I, I like that about it. And um, that's going to be coming out soon as well. So I'm excited about that, too. Awesome. Alone. Well, I'm excited for you. Uh, was it uh, just really quick? Was it was it like when you're being vulnerable and putting out your 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 the real emotions and stuff? Like, do you feel like you're? Do you feel like it's therapy in a way for yourself? Yes. For a long time, 
mind you, this is what's led up to me feeling like, oh, I really need to push the music and stuff. When I would be at home by myself, I would literally just spend like hours, like just like making songs and putting things together. And just like, because that's literally like, it's like, you know, people do things for their mental health. They go and they work out and they do this. And I actually, I do that too, but like top, top of the line, you know, sometimes when I was having a bad day, it was really helpful for me to just sit down and write down poetry that related to my feelings in the moment, you know, how I was feeling right then and there, or, um, I did diary entries when I was a lot younger, when I was a kid, but I switched to more poetry as I got older. Um, but like writing out poetry and then just like, I'll get my piano out. I'll mess with different melodies and tunes and things like that, um, on there, or I'll go and I'll just like look up, you know, different loops and things like that. Just, and just sit there and mess with it because it's, you know, it is therapeutic. Yeah. Which is why people should be doing things that they love to do because usually what you love to do is your therapy. Oh, yes. Oh, you could, oh that's so true. Yes. 1000% is. I, I agree with that. But I it, even if even if it is therapy, I do believe that um, sometimes it's good. Well, at least for me, um, I kind of got into a space where I was like, okay, I'm not going to make any movies for this, like for this amount of time, because I need to like, it's like a balance for me. I have to like, okay, I'm going to put the movies aside. <laughs> I'm just going to focus on myself and family and relationships and that kind of thing. Cause I think sometimes, I mean, you know, I was telling my friend, I was like, you can pour so much in your creative world in, in this cup, but then this cup over here is empty like the soul of you. It's like that. It's, I think it's a healthy balance for sure. Amen to that. I agree. I think if it's on your terms, if it's yes. on your terms, then yeah. it can be therapeutic. But I do agree if you're pressuring yourself or you have like, it's actual work and you're yeah. pressured and you have a deadline and things like that or actual work to be done in it. The therapy part, the therapy part kind of goes away <laughs> a little bit for a second, a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> any, any, uh, quotes or anything that you know you know how you get like this business can be up and down like when when it's um when it gets when the going gets rough I guess what anything that reminds you it could be a quote or something that you keep in the back of your head to keep you go, keep you going and to get you out of that from going to that like dark place in your life Just you to... know I, if I were to give a quote necessarily have a quote my fourth and fifth grade teacher when I was a kid made us write believe at the top of our page of paper every single day like for every assignment we would lose points if we didn't write it so for two years straight I had to write believe at the top of my paper I never forgot how to spell it Love that. <laughs> but um she made us do that every single day for two years so I actually like still think about that all the time so it's really crazy like when I'm down sometimes like there's it's the same thoughts that I shared with you earlier, or the, the idea that I always am reminding myself that like, you're doing this because this is what you want. And you mm -hmm. wanted to do stuff like this and you need to live your truth. Um, but I, sometimes that will pop in my head. Like I'll think about how she had us write that on our paper every day, every single day. And I'm just like, you know, you gotta, you really do have to believe. It. And it's like crazy because a lot of times if you really believe something and you just like leave your mental doors open like you really can like like it'll actually happen like if you just commit like you have to fully believe that you can do it too though like I think sometimes you know the blockade in your head is actually yourself yeah. like what's blocking you from things is actually yourself and so I feel like reminding myself that like that I can't you know you can't be negative because if you're negative you're actually holding yourself back because you're not allowing the universe to work in the way that it's supposed to work if you're not accepting reciprocate you know not reciprocate if you're not accepting it though if you're not taking it you know in and believing in yourself then things aren't you know that you can't you sometimes you could be down on yourself but you can't let it stay that way because it's going to actually you're holding yourself back basically absolutely i love that no that's a that's a great that's great it's great thank you thank you for coming on and sharing sharing your life and your knowledge wow. with us thank you for letting me come on i had oh, fun uh yeah, definitely. Definitely have to come back. Oh, and where can people find you on social media to follow you on all that? 
So my Instagram is at I am Casey B with um, K A Y C E E B E E. Um, and then my Facebook is just Casey B K A Y C E E B. Um, and my TikTok is is I am Casey B. Also, everything's I am Casey B. What am I talking about? <laughs> YouTube Casey B. Love it. Um, K A Y C E E B E E. <laughs> Sorry, the B E E is on my Instagram. Love it. I didn't love have it. The B. Are you are you on Twitter? Am I? I, I yeah, I am on Twitter. I'm like, I'm not you're like, wait a minute. I need to get better at Twitter. I'm I don't get. Thread. You don't threat. What is that? Is is that the same thing? Like it's before? like I think that Instagram is stealing Twitter because it's kind of like Twitter, and I was like, it's, I don't know why it's like. I get more reaction. I tried Twitter. I made a Twitter years ago. And I, I used to make posts. One time I made a post and I was like, no one's going to respond to this. And they didn't. They didn't respond. I don't get Twitter either. I'm like, I, I don't understand. Do <laughs> I see people with all these followers and I'm like, what did they do? How do they get this? I'm like, no one even talks to me. I'm like, I just want three people to talk to you on here. Like, that's it. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. It's like I just go on there and talk to myself. Right. <laughs> I'm like, wow, it's so funny. I have this really positive quote for everyone. And I went back and it's like six months later and I'm still the only person that saw it. <laughs> oh God. That's hilarious. Well, everyone go and follow. You're amazing. We are I'm super happy and yeah. like congratulations at all that you're doing. Thank um you so much. Yeah, that awesome. Thank you again for your time. And uh yeah, definitely come back in the future. I totally will. I had so much fun talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. You too. You too. And thank you all for listening. And always remember to live, love, laugh. We'll see you guys next time.